بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فما فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستك الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So inshallah we'll continue from uh, where we left off last week and as you can see the, the paragraph that begins with the in the red highlight there so inshallah we'll start from there where we left off so the shaykh he continues and he says he says وَلِهَذَا فَإِنَّ مَعْرِفَةَ هَذِي الْأُمُورِ أَذِيمَةِ الْأَحَمِّيَّةِ وَالْحَاجَةُ إِلَيْهَا مَاسَ وَفِي زَمَانِنَا هَذَا يَتَأَكَّدُ هَذَا الْأَمْرِ بِشَكْلٍ أَكْبَرٍ لِأَنَّ وَسَائِلَ الْمَعْرِفَةِ وَوَسَائِلَ الْتِسَالِ التَّسَعَةِ وَكَثُرَتْ فِي زَمَانِنَا وأسبها لدعاة الباطل أو وأسبها لدعاة الباطل منافذ كثيرة على وقول الناس ومداخل ديدة فأثار الشبهات وزين الباطل وحرف الناس عن دين الله وعن الحق والهدى المستمد من كتاب الله وسنة رسوله الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم ولهذا أقول مؤكدا ينبغي علينا ينبغي علينا دراسة مثل هذه الرسالة النافعة نواقض الإسلام بآنات ودقة بآنات ودقة وحسن فهم, فهم بنية اتقاء هذه النواقض واجتنابها والبعد عنها والبعد عنها وتحذير الناس منها ومن الوقوع فيها سدن so the Sheikh, he says, continuing from where he left off last week regarding this book, the book that he named The Nullifiers of Al-Islam. The Sheikh was explaining the book, he says, Hafidullah, he says, and this is the reason why we need to know these affairs because they are great affairs concerning our deen. We need to know um, what the, what those things are that nullify our our religion. So if we fall into any of these nullifiers, it nullifies our religion. We end up leaving our deen. So he says, in order to avoid it, we should be aware of it so we can avoid those pitfalls along the path. Yeah. So then the Shaykh, he continues, he says, <coughs> and we are in need of it very much. Especially, he says, especially in our times. In the times and the era that we live in, it's even more important that we know what these nullifiers are. He says, why? Why is it that? He says, because the ways and means in our time are more. They've increased, for example, the internet and other ways and means of communication. The technology that, that is present today wasn't there before. And so because of this, there's many ways for people to, you know, spread their falsehood for example so the people of falsehood they have more options available to them to spread this and so it's more important for us to know what the correct position is so we can avoid falling into any of these pitfalls from whichever window or angle they come from that's what he's saying and he says that a lot of these these doubts and these all these falsehoods that are being spread have led to many people uh, going off the right path being deceived and veering off the right path away from the deen of Allah and away from guidance and away from the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa This is what the shaykh, uh, the shaykh is saying here. And he says, this is why I'm saying with all sureness that it's incumbent and it's important for all of us to study the likes of this book that we are studying today. That we are studying at the moment He says because it's very beneficial To know What the nullifiers of Islam are 
uh, and he says that you know we need to you know give due attention and importance to these matters so that we can be conscious of them and stay away from them and not fall into them and also warning the people are being warned of being aware of falling into them as well yeah so then the shaykh he continues next paragraph he says وَكَمَا أَنَّهُ مَطْلُوبٌ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِ مَعْرِفَةَ نَوَاقِدَ الْإِسْلَامِ الَّتِي تُفْسَدُ الدِّينِ مِنْ أَسَاسِهِ لِيَتَّقِيَهَا فَإِنَّهُ كَذَلِكَ مَطْلُوبٌ مِنْهُ أَنْ يَعْرِفَ كَبَائِرَ الْإِثْمَ وَأَغْضَائِمَ الْظُنُوبِ سَوَاءً مِنْهَا مَا كَانَ نَاقِذًا لِلْإِسْلَامِ أَوْ مُنْقِسًا لِكَمَالِهِ الْوَاجِبِ لِأَنَّ الْإِسْلَامَ لَهُ نَوَاقِذٌ وَلَهُ نَوَاقِصٌ النَّوَاقِذُ تُفْسِدُهُ مِنْ أَسَاسِهِ وَتُقْدَحُ فِي أَصْلِهِ وَالنَّوَاقِصُ تُقْدَحُ فِي كَمَالِ الْإِيمَانِ الْوَاجِبِ تُنْقِصُ دِينَ الشَّخْصِ وَتُضْعِفُ إِيمَانَهُ وَكُلُّ مِنَ النَّوَاقِذِ وَالنَّوَاقِصِ مَطْلُوبٌ مَعْرِفَتُهَا لِاتِّقَائِهَا وَأَنْسَهُ فِي هَذَا الْمَقَامِ بِقِرَاءَةِ كِتَابِ الْكَبَائِرِ لِلْإِمَامِ الذَّهَبِ لِلْإِمَامِ الذَّهَبِ رحمه الله تعالى وكتاب الكبائر لشيخ الإسلام محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى فهذان الكتابان في غاية النفع في هذا الباب التحذير من نواقض من نواقض الدين ومن نواقصه التحذير من مبتلا من مبتلات هذا الدين وتحذير من الأمور التي تنقص كمال هذا الدين الواجب فيكون العبد بهذه المعرفة سلك سبيلا واتخذ وسيلة تنفعه غاية النفع باتقاء هذه الأمور واجتناب هذه الأضائم والكبائر. So then the Sheikh he says a lot he makes a lot of important points in this in this paragraph. He says by uh, he begins with he begins with he says like it is that is requested and sought from the Muslim that he knows what these nullifiers of, of his religion are, the nullifiers of Islam which, why? because they uh, nullify and render his deen corrupted from its foundations, so therefore we need to be aware of it and conscious of, uh, conscious of these so we can stay away from these and falling into these traps so then he says, so therefore it's so it's sought after. We need to know. And he also mentions we also need to know what the kabaira and the kabair here. Kabair, whenever you hear kabira or kabair, is referring to the major sins. So we also need to know what the major sins are. Give, the Sheikh gives us a extra benefit. He says we also need to know not just those things that nullify our religion completely, but also those things, those actions and those deeds that are known as may or fall under the category of major sins he says whether so the sheikh says whether it be something that nullifies your islam or whether it be something that makes your islam deficient like your iman deficient uh he says here that islam it has those things that nullify it called nawaqid as we all know and also islam has those things within it if a person does those deeds that it will weaken his religion, his faith, it weaken his iman. It'll corrupt and weaken his iman. So the Sheikh makes a distinction here between those two. Right? And then he goes on to say, therefore we need to know what they are so we can stay away from them. So we can avoid the pitfalls and warn others as well and teach them what we know as well. Yeah? And then the Sheikh, he recommends a book to us. I think it's available in English as well. Uh, it's called Kitab al-Kaba'ir. The Book of Major Sins. I believe it is available uh, in English translation as well for anybody who doesn't know Arabic. So it's, it's an important book to read. Every every Muslim should read this book. And also there's the same title for uh, uh, for, the, uh, for a different author, Sheikh Al-Islam, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, Rahmullah, as well. So there's two books there. I'm not sure which one has been translated, but there's one of them has definitely been translated, uh, if not both of them. The Sheikh says that these books are extremely benefit and it helps us to be aware of the nullifiers as well as those uh, deeds that reduce or weaken our religion and the falsify our religion and th this is what it says towards the end of this paragraph 
So then the Sheikh he finishes and he says that if if you if we're aware of these nullifiers and those deeds that uh, weaken our iman as well, then 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 you know you're on a on a goodly path. You know you're you're on a, a path that benefits. You know you're benefiting then and you're staying away from these traps and falling into them. So then the Sheikh he continues. He says, وَقَدْ تَنَوَّعَتْ بَيَانَاتِ النَّبِيُّ عَلَيْهِ سَلَاتُ وَالسَّلَامِ وَتَرَائِقُ تَوْجِيهِهِ فِي تَحْذِيرِ الْأُمَّةِ مِنْ هَذِي الْعَظَائِمِ وَإِضَاحِهِ لِخَتَرِهَا الْجَسِيمِ وَمَغَبَّتِهَا الْأَلِيمَةِ عَلَى أَهْلِهَا وَأَرْبَابِهَا فَقَوْلِهِ فِي حَدِيثِ ابْنِ مَسْعُودٍ أَلَا أُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِأَكْبَرِ الْكَبَائِرِ قُلْنَا بَلَى يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ قَالَ الْإِشْرَاكُ بِاللَّهِ وَأُنْقُوقُ الْوَالِدَيْنِ وَكَانَ مُتَّكِئًا فَجَلَسَ فَقَالَ أَلَا وَشَهَادَةُ الزُّورِ أَلَا وَقَوْلُ الزُّورِ فَمَا زَالَ يُرَدِّدُهَا عَلَيْهِ السَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامِ حَتَّى قُلْنَا لَيْتَهُ سَكَتْ أَشْفَقُوا عَلَيْهِ سَلَوَاتُ اللَّهِ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْهِ هَذَا مِنْ تَمَامِ نُسْحِهِ وَبَيَانِهِ لِأُمَّتِهِ وَفِي حَجَّةِ الْوَدَعِ خطب الناس وقال في خطبته صلى الله عليه وسلم ألا إنما هن أربع يعني موبقات مهلكات يجب اتقاؤها واجتنابها ألا إنما هن أربع لا تشرك بالله شيئا ولا تقتل النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق ولا تزنوا ولا تسرقوا حضر عليه الصلاة والسلام في جموع الحجيج من هذه الكبائر ونهى عنها أمام أمام أمامه الجموع ويحذرهم من الكبائر لا 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 تشركوا لا تزنوا لا تسرقوا لا تقتلوا ألا إنما هن أربع أي أكبر الكبائر والله يقول قل تعالوا أتلو ما حرم ربكم عليكم ألا تشركوا به شيئا بدأ بالإشراك في بيان المحرمات مما يدل على أن الشرك بالله عز وجل عظم المحرمات وأكبر الموبقات وأظلم الظلم وأظلم الظلم وأشد الجرائم وأفضحها وأفضحها. So then the Sheikh he says this long paragraph. He goes on to say that there's many ahadith and clarifications from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that have come within the ahadith. The prophetic narrations with regards to advising and warning us and informing us um, um, and informing his nation uh, about these these great affairs and clarifying their dangers um, and and what you know the painful situations that could cause you and cause us it, and it's people who do it. So then the Sheikh says, for example, he gives us one example just to help us understand what that means. He says, like his speech, like the speech of uh, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, in the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud, where he mentioned what we read in Arabic there, Allah unabbi'ukum. So the rough translation, should I not inform you of the, the, the most major of the sins, the mother of all the major sins, the mother of all the major sins. And, they, and, and the Sahaba, they were there, they said, and we said, Bala, yes, of course. Oh Rasulullah. So then the uh, and then the Prophet وسلم, he said committing shirk, associating partners in worship with Allah and not being dutiful to your parents. And he was sitting, he was leaning, so then he sat up straight and he said he said and then it, it was said Allah was shahada to Zur and also uh, being present around false speech whether that be backbiting or any other kind of uh, uh, wrong speech, that you are witnessing that. And then he kept saying, Allah wa qawlu zur. And he kept repeating it, alayhi salatu wa salam, up until, you know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, up until they, they, would think, they, would, they would thought that they would be quiet, that, be, that, that they would end, the speech would end. And I know they, 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 they obviously they cared for the Sahaba, of course, they cared for the Prophet very much and they loved the Prophet very much. 
and so you know they feared for him you know because he was repeating these things this speech of his but the sheikh says that this is from the completeness of the advice and the clarification of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to his ummah and the sheikh mentions in the um, in the in the uh, in in the final hajj of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Hajjat al Wada, the final uh, Hajj that the Prophet ﷺ made, he uh, gave a sermon to the people that were there, the Sahaba and, and others, the Sahaba that were there, the people that were the Muslims. And he said to them in his sermon, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, And are they not but for? And are they not but for? He said, And, they, and are they not but for? And he said, And he mentioned those four. So they said, Are they not? You know, when somebody says to you, are they not before? You're like, and what are these four things? So you're, you're, attenting, you're, you're attentive now because you're, you want to know. So this is one from the beautiful um, ways of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi how he used to catch your attention. Uh, and and when you heard the type of speech like this, you would pay, you'd give it your full uh, due attention because you know something important, important and extremely important was about to be mentioned. Yeah. So he said, is it not but four? And so then he completed his speech and he said, don't uh, associate partners with Allah. Don't associate any partners in worship with Allah. Don't kill your, don't kill yourselves. Yeah. And also don't commit fornication and don't steal. And so these are the four, like these are the mother of all sins. These four are the mother of all major sins. Yeah. On top of them is shirk, of course, yeah, and and obviously uh, shirk. If whoever commits major shirk ends up going outside of the fold of Islam, obviously the other sins they don't. So uh, the sheikh makes the point here. So then he goes on to say that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned the people from these sins, yeah, and he was in the front of group while he was giving the sermon, mentioning about these major sins. Those four, you know, the mother of all major sins. Yeah. And then the Shaykh goes on to mention an ayah from the Quran. Um, and if we go to uh, Surah Al Anam, verse 151, uh, let's read that in English, English translation. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, come, I will recite what your Lord has prohibited you from. Join not anything in worship with him. Be good and dutiful to your parents. Kill not your children because of poverty until the end of the ayah. And so. The Sheikh brings evidences from both the Quran and the Sunnah here. And the Sheikh makes the point in the end, end of this paragraph. He says that he began with shirk, associating partners in worship with Allah. When it came to mentioning the prohibitions, or oh, those things are impermissible, haram. And the Sheikh says because shirk is the greatest haram. And it's the biggest sin. And committing major shirk takes you out of the fold of Islam. It's one of the nullifiers as well. Yeah. So then the Shaykh goes on to say, he says to us, فَشَاهِدُوا أَنَّ مَعْرِفَةَ نَوَاقِدَ الْإِسْلَامِ أَيْ الْأُمُورِ الَّتِي تُبْتِلُ الدِّينِ وَكَذَلِكَ مَعْرِفَةَ النَّوَاقِدْ أَمْرٌ مَطْلُوبٌ مِنْ كُلِّ مُسْلِمٌ لَا يَكْفِي أَن تَعْرِفَ الْحَقَّ بَلْ لَا بُدَّ مِنْ مَعْرِفَةَ الشَّرِّ لِلْتِقَائِهِ وَعِنَّمَا نَقُولُ لَا بُدَّ مِنْ مَعْرِفَةَ الشَّرِّ نَعْنِي بِذَلِكَ مَعْرِفَةَ الشَّرِّ فِي ذَوْءِ الْآيَاتِ وَالْأَحَادِيثِ لَا أَنْ يَذْهَبَ الْإِنسَانِ إِلَى كُتُبْ أَهْلِ الْبَاطِلِ وَكُتُبْ أَهْلِ الشَّرِّ فَيَقْرَأُ فِيهَا لِيَعْرِفَ الشَّرِّ هَذَا مِنْ وَسَائِلِ الْإِنْحِرَافِ وَوَسَائِلِ الضَّلَالِ لا تقرأ كتب أهل الباطل ولا تقرأ كتب دعاة الضلال بل يحذر منها أشد الهذ مثل ما يحذر الإنسان من الآفات الأذيمة والأمور المؤطبة يحذر من كتب أهل الباطل وإنما المراد بمعرفة الشر أي معرفته في ذو الآيات في ذو الأحاديث في ذو كلام أئمة السلف ورحمهم الله وأهل العلم ولهذا أحلت في هذا الباب إلى قراءة كتاب الكبائر للذهب الكبائر كلها شر على الإنسان ولكن نقرأ كتاب الكبائر لماذا بأي نية 
نقرأ كتاب الكبائر بنية بنية أن نتقي هذه الأمور وأن نعرف خطرها وأن نعرف ضررها وأن نعرف عقوباتها لنحذرها ولنتقيها ولا إلا نكون ولا إلا نكون من أهلها. So then the Sheikh he says in this paragraph and this is also very important. He says the point is that we know what the nullifiers of our religion are, i.e. the affairs which falsify our deen and render it to nothing. And he says, he says like that, we need to know what these nullifiers are and it is sought after for, it's required from every Muslim, let's put it that way, it's, it should be sought after by every Muslim. Every Muslim should be seeking this. To know what these nullifiers are. He says it's not if, uh, sufficient. It's not enough. Uh, that uh, we know the truth. It's not enough that we know what the truth is. Rather it's important and, and incumbent. Uh, of knowing what the evils are as well. So we need to know what the tr truth is of course. But we also need to know what the falsehood is as well. That's out there. Why? In order that we can avoid it. Because if we don't know it, we might be falling into it and we'll never know. So we need to have knowledge of it, which makes sense, right? And then the Sheikh, he goes on to say, he says, then we say it's incumbent and upon us to know this evil. And when that said, he says, we mean by that, that we, we know the evil, what the evils are as well. Why? Because he says, if we don't know what the evils are, then it will cause, it's, it, it's one of the reasons or ways that we could become misled and become deceived and veer off the straight path. That's what he's mentioning here. So it's important to know this. And he says that here, he says, and he says the intention here about knowing evil, he says, it me, what he means by this is in the light of the Quran and the Sunnah, in the light of the uh, of the verses of Allah Jalla wa Ala, the verses in the Quran and the narrations of the Prophet Sallallahu in the light of these two, the Quran and the Sunnah, and in the light of uh, the speech of the Imams of the Salaf, may Allah have mercy upon them, and the people of knowledge, the true people of knowledge. And the Shaykh says, this is why I, I recommend and I mentioned and pointed you towards the book uh, 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 or reading the book uh, the, uh, the Major Sins Yeah, I was reading the book The Book of Major Sins uh, By Imam al-Zahabi Rahimahullah He says, why? Because he says All these major sins They are evil All of them are evil For the for the person For the person All of these major sins Are evil Right? And the Sheikh says But we read The Book of Major Sins Why? Why do we read The Book of Major Sins? With which intention do we, we would we read this book? He says we read the book of major sins, for example, which is recommended us to read as well. He says with the intention that we are conscious, are conscious of all of those uh, major sins, so we can stay away from them and know their dangers, and we know their harms, and we know the resulting punishments that if we fall into them. What will we expect? So we're upon clarity and so we can avoid them and know that if we fall into them or if others around us fall into them or uh, we could potentially fall into them that we are, you know, in, informing ourselves and others. So then the Shaykh, he goes on to say to us, he says, Wa asar Allah, wa asar Allah Azza wa Jal and yu'idhana jami'an min nawaqid al-deen wa nawaqisi وأن يحفظ علينا ديننا وإيماننا وأن يحفظنا بالإسلام قائمين وأن يحفظنا به قائدين وأن يحفظنا به راقدين وأن يؤيدنا من الظلال والزيغ وأن يثبتنا على دينه القويم وقد كان نبينا عليه الصلاة والسلام يقول ثلاثا أو ثلاث مرات إذا أصبح وثلاث مرات إذا أمسى 
اللهم إني أعوذ بك من الكفر ومن الفقر وأعوذ بك من عذاب القبر لا إله إلا أنت يستعيد بالله تبارك وتعالى من الكفر فالمسلم يتعوذ بالله من الكفر يتعوذ بالله من منكرات الأخلاق والأهواء والأدواء ويعرف هذا الذي يتعوذ بالله منه ليجمع بين استعانة بالله عز وجل وبذل الأسباب التي هي اتقاء تلك الأباطيل واجتناب تلك الأضاليل التي تحرف العبد عن سواء السبيل So let's just stop there for a second with these long paragraphs So then the Sheikh he makes a dua for all of us He's, for all of us including himself He says I ask Allah عز وجل and that he protects us he protects all of us and that uh, from from the nullifiers of our religion and those things those deeds or actions from speech or actions themselves um that uh, take away from our religion that make it deficient make our iman deficient for example he says he asks allah also that he uh, preserve us and preserve our deen and our faith our iman and also to preserve our islam our religion uh, uh was whether you know he, he, this is a, a way of uh, arabic expression whether we're standing you know whether we are sitting whether we are on our sides whichever situation we're in he asks allah to preserve our deed and our iman alhamdulillah uh, uh, and also uh, he asks allah that he protects us from um uh, from all kinds of misguidance and deception and that allah yes allah that he makes us firm upon his is upright religion, Al-Islam. And the Shaykh then gives us a benefit. And he says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, every time he entered the morning or entered the evening, he would say the following supplication, dua, supplication. O oh Allah, I seek refuge and protection in you from, from disbelief and from poverty and from uh, the punishment of the grave. La ilaha illa ant. There's, there's none but you. There's none worthy of worship but you. Yeah, meaning there's none worthy of worship in truth but you. Or there's a, uh, yeah, exactly, yeah, that, that's what it is. So then the Sheikh, he goes on to say, he explains this. He says that the, uh, that, that the, uh, uh, that the Prophet, Sallam, you know, is seeking protection and aid and protection and refuge in Allah from disbelief. And he says that the Muslim should should do this. This is a perfect example from the Prophet Sallallahu that we should do the same thing. These are from the Azkar of the entering the morning after Fajr and the Azkar supplications when we enter the evening. Um, um, usually this time period is between Asr and Maghrib. Uh, I think most of us know this, but uh, just in case somebody is not aware. So then um, the Shaykh goes on to say that we also seek refuge from the evil, the evil, you know, evil manners, and deeds and actions, desires and, you know, the, the, the likes of this. And that we know that this is, uh, that, you know, seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is, you know, it is that which is between seeking his aid as well, seeking his aid. And so the way we look at, Refuge, he says, is by asking Allah directly, of course, and also taking the ways and means that you can, the halal ways and means, yeah, to avoid this falsehood uh, and staying away from it and uh, all kinds of falsehood and misguidance. And then the Sheikh mentions an ayah here to us also as evidence for our own uh, uh, benefit. He says, Rabbana la tuzik qulubana ba'da id hadaytana. وَهَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَابِ I'm all uh, aware of this ayah. Uh, no problem with going over it again. Uh, uh, from Surah Al Imran, uh, chapter 3, verse 8, if we go there. Chapter 3, verse 8. They say, Our Lord, let not our hearts deviate from the truth after you have guided us and grant us mercy from you. Truly, you are the bestower. So, you know, that's a great dua, an example from the Quran for us. And also, another dua that we may, we should be aware of, uh, we mention it here, the Shaykh has mentioned it, he says, Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qulubana ala deenikan, 
and this is a very important dua that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used to make regularly and we should do the same thing asking Allah saying oh Allah the turner of the hearts keep our hearts firm upon your deen so we're asking Allah for firmness because you never know what can happen and you know we need to put our trust and our full reliance uh, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always so then the Shaykh goes on to say he says قال رحمه الله تعالى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بدأ بالبسملة تأسيا بكتاب الله واقتداء بالرسول الكريم صلوات الله وسلامه عليه والبسملة كلمة استعانة أي أبدأ كتابتي هذه مستعينا بالله متبركا ومتيمنا بذكر اسمه جل وعلا طالبا طالبا مده وعونه وتوفيقه وان يبارك فيما كتب فيما كتبت وان ينفع به وفيما كتبت so the sheikh says now we're going back to the original book original author the sheikh is explaining it starts with bismillah rahman rahim so we've got past the introduction now okay so we're moving on into the actual book itself nawaqib al islam the nullifiers of Islam. So the Shaykh, he says that the original author, may Allah have mercy upon him, starts with Bismillah rahman rahim And in Arabic, Bismi- the, the term for Bismillah rahman rahim is called Basmala. Yeah, or Al-Basmalatu or Basmalatun or Basmala. This is what he's referring to. And the Shaykh says, he gives us the reason why. He says this is in... Uh, by following the example of the Quran, the book of Allah, and following the example of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because this is the example of the Quran and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, starting with this, the Basmala, yeah. And then uh, the Sheikh mentions he gives us this is good because not everybody always knows this. Uh, you usually learn these sort of things when you're studying the Arabic or, or like we're studying now. Otherwise, generally speaking, you may not learn this and it's important to know so he says what does bismillah rahman rahim actually mean apart from we you know we we know that we 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 calling upon allah's name and his is rahma his mercy you know what does it mean he says it means it is he says it's a word that is used or an expression that is used seeking allah's aid when we say bismillah rahman rahim we're seeking allah's aid and assistance yeah and he says, I, when you say Bismillah Rahman Rahim or Bismillah, whenever you eat, you say Bismillah, you know, uh, whenever you do things, you're saying Bismillah, we know this. What does it mean? It means different things. It means, generally means seeking aid and assistance from Allah in application to that thing that you're doing. So for example, when we started this lesson, we started off by saying Bismillah, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, seeking aid in Allah and asking him, that he blesses this lesson uh, and you know and that we are doing this lesson and conducting this lesson and studying in this circle online uh, for example uh, with seeking his aid and his blessing etc like this this is what it means so every time you and his help and his success we're asking all of these things for Allah whenever we say Bismillah and we do the action this is what we're doing you know this is the full explanation of that m- meaning of Bismillah Rahman Rahim so it's very important to know that and um, then it makes sense when you're doing things you're like okay yeah I understand I'm asking I'm seeking Allah's aid before I go and do something before I go out before I eat you know uh, it was before I maybe go to work or, or do something I'm saying Bismillah Bismillah Rahim. so then the Sheikh goes on to say قَالَ اِعْلَمْ أَنَّ نَوَاقِدَ الْإِسْلَامِ أَشْرَةُ نَوَاقِدْ قَوْلُهُمْ رَحْمَهُ اللَّهِ اِعْلَمْ هَذِهِ قَلِمَةٌ يُرَادُ بِهَا شَدُّ الْإِنْتِنَا وتحفير وتحفير السامع إلى حسن الاستماع وحسن الإصغاء إعلم والعلم المدعو إليه هنا هو اليقين الجازم أي كن على يقين وكن على جزم وكن على دراية تامة ومعرفة إعلم أي تيقن يقينا جازما لا شك فيه so then the sheikh says that in the the original author uh, Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab he says I'lam I'lam anna nawaqid al-Islami ashratu nawaqid know know that 
the nullifiers of Al Islam are ten. Right? Ten. So we know there's ten. And these are the major nullifiers. There's ten nullifiers. Uh, may Allah have mercy him says that. And he said, and the Sheikh says that the original author he says, I'lam, he says no. Because he says the, the intention of using this word no, it is to catch our intention uh, our attention. When somebody says no, all of a sudden we'll turn our attention to them to listen to what they've got to say after that word they've mentioned. And it's to to uh get our attention so that we listen and that we're attentive in our listening about what's going to be said after that. And that also means that we have have certainty as well that no, whatever comes after it, that with certainty and with, uh, uh, you know, with uh, uh, a firmness, have that firmness. And or have that firmness. And the Sheikh says, I be upon certainty be upon firmness when it comes to this be upon uh, knowledge and awareness complete awareness and i'lam when he says i'lam i.e be certain absolute certainty and absolute firmness without any doubt that's what it means yeah so then the shaykh says wa yu'ta wa yu'ta bi hadhi al-kalimati 'inda dhikr al-umur al-muhimmati al-'adhimati allati yuqsad al-da'wah ilayha أو الأمور الخطيرة التي يقصد التحذير منها وهذا الأسلوب جاء في القرآن الكريم في مواضع عديدة يؤتى بإعلم بين يدي الأمور العظيمة المهمة وكذلك جاء في السنة في مواضع في مواضع عديدة من ذلك قول الله سبحانه وتعالى فعلم أنه لا إله إلا الله واستغفر لذنبك so let's just stop there for a second. So then the Sheikh says, and it's also uh, this this word, it comes and it's mentioned. It, and when it's mentioned, it comes, the affairs that come after it, that are mentioned after it, um, are important and great matters. And, and that what is, that's what's intended when somebody says, I'lam. or it could be affairs that are, Dangerous to us or maybe harmful to us And that's what the intention is to be aware as well Or warned from something And he says that this style or this way Of, of, of speaking or writing By using this kind of method It's from the Quran al Karim itself In many many different places we see this I'lam And you know I'lam When somebody says no And then in front of that Or what comes after that is Affairs that are uh, uh, that require our utmost attention and that these affairs are mentioned, they are important. Yeah. Uh, and the Sheikh says, like, likewise, in the Sunnah of the Prophet, وسلم, in many, many places from the narrations of the Prophet. وسلم. And the Sheikh says, and from that, uh, uh, the examples here from the Quran, the speech of Allah, where we read in Arabic, two ayahs, Surah to Muhammad, verse 19, and then uh, the other ayah was from uh, Surah, to, uh, Surah to Al-Baqarah, verse 260. So if we go there and have a look, we can see the meanings of that translation. Um, Surah to Muhammad first. Let's go there. So know, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that la ilaha illallah, none has the right to be worshipped in truth but Allah and ask forgiveness for your sins. Yeah, and then to the end of the ayah. So you can see that major, that something major, very important, Allah mentions straight after saying, so no. Also, if you go to Surah to Al-Baqarah now, Surah Al-Baqarah verse 260 Towards the end I believe وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ hakim. Right towards the end And know that Allah is almighty, all wise Also very important to know That we know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says know that Allah is almighty, all wise Yeah, so then the Sheikh goes on to say وَالْآيَاتُ فِي هَذَا الْمَعْنَى كَثِيرَةٌ تُقْرَبُ مِنَ الثَّلَاثِينَ آيَةٌ وَمِنْ ذَلِكُمْ فِي سُنَّةِ قَوْلِ النَّبِيَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامِ لِبْنِ عَبَّاسِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمَا Then the Shaykh says, he gives, the exa- he gives us a, a, an extra point here. He says in the types, these types of ayah that begin with I'lam, um, no, he says they're roughly around 30 verses. So roughly around 30 verses are like this within the Qur'an, yeah? And then the Shaykh says, and from that also is from the narrations of the Prophet, the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Uh, uh, on the authority of Ibn Abbas where he said 
واعلم ان الامه لو اجتمعوا على ان ينفعوك بشيء لن لن ينفعوك الا بشيء كتبه الله لك ولو ولو اجتمعوا على ان يضروك بشيء لن يضروك الا بشيء كتبه الله عليك رفعت الاقلام وجفت الصحف so then here's an example from the hadith that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the son of uh, uh, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma where it was said and know that a nation would will would gather if a nation would gather yeah to benefit you if a, a whole nation a group of people would gather together to benefit you they wouldn't be able to benefit you except that which Allah has written for you and the opposite if a, a group of people or a nation gathered up against you to harm you with a thing they wouldn't be able to harm you except that which Allah had written for you and the hadith ends with this the pens have been lifted and the and the let's say the the, the scriptures have dried have become dry like the ink has dried that's from the qadr of Allah right so we understand this So the Shaykh says, وَلِهَذَا تَرَجَ عَدَدٌ مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ فِي مُسَنَّفَاتِهِمْ وَفِي خُتَبِهِمْ وَمُوَاعِدِهِمْ إِنْدَى ذِكْرِ الْأُمُورِ لَذِيمَةِ الْمُهِمَّةِ الَّتِي يُطْلَبُ مِنَ الْمُسْتَمِعِ وَالْمُطَلَقِّ أَنْ يَتَنَبَّهَا لَهَا وَأَنْ يُرْعِيَهَا احتمامه وَيْنَايَتِهِ يؤتى بهذه الكلمة فإذا خاتبت المخاتب ابتداء قلت اعلم يا فلان انتبه لك وحضر ذهنه واستعد للاستماع والاستفادة So then the Shaykh completes this paragraph here he would say, saying that the, some of the people of knowledge in the uh, in the in, in what they've authored on, or from their sermons or from their advices mention of great affairs when they say they say they mention great when they mention great affairs and it's and it's sought from the the one who's listening and the one who's actually giving that sermon to, to pay attention when you hear the likes of these expressions like no oh so and so no and the meaning of that is that we should when we hear that we should be paying attention and get ready to hear something extremely important and that we should devote all of our attention when we hear something like that um, as the Sheikh has mentioned throughout these paragraphs here that we've read so we'll just have a look where we are we've nearly finished inshallah we'll finish where the red highlighted text is so we've just got um, just another sort of page half a page to go inshallah the Sheikh um, he says here قال أعلم أن نواقض الإسلام أن نواقض عرفنا أنها جمع جمع أنها جمع ناقض والمراد بها الأمور التي تفسد الدين وتبتله وتنقل المرء من من حذيرة الدين ويكون بها من الكفار المشركين أهل النار الذين لا لا يقبل الله منهم صرفا ولا عدلا ولا عدلا. so the sheikh says here so when the original author said إعلم أن نواقض الإسلام know that the nullifiers of Islam and the sheikh says as we've been going through as you know that the intention or the point of the nullifiers of Islam that we know it, it that Nawaqid is the plural of Naqid in Arabic nullifier and these are the affairs that corrupt our religion and they falsify our religion and whoever falls into them leaves the fold of our religion and so the sheikh he goes on to say here and so with that the person he becomes a, a disbeliever Uh, and a person of the hellfire if he does not realize doesn't repent and return and then the sheikh says here that Allah does there after that Allah does not accept anything from him he falls into that so it's a serious matter and then the sheikh goes on to say وَقَوْلُهُ الْإِسْلَامُ أَرَّفَهُ رَحْمَهُ اللَّهِ فِي بَعْدِ الْمُسَنَّفَاتِ بِقَوْلِهِ وَالْإِسْلَامُ لِلَّهِ بِالتَّوْحِيدِ وَالْإِنْقِيَادِ لَهُ بِالطَاعَةِ وَالْخُلُوسِ الإسلام استسلام لله وانقياد وطوعية وامتثال لأوامر الله والمسلم هو المستسلم المنقاد 
المذعن لشرع الله سبحانه وتعالى بفعل بفعل ما أمر وترك ما نهى عنه تبارك وتعالى وزجر. So then the Sheikh says, and all his speech, and his speech, al Islam. What does Islam mean? He says, and Islam. He says that the the Sheikh had mentioned this. May Allah, uh, may, uh, Allah have mercy on him. In some of his other works, in some of his other books, he said, and the Sheikh brings this benefit to us here in this lesson. He says. It is to lower yourself and submit yourself to Allah with Tawheed, right? With Tawheed and submission and, uh, you know, lowering, humbling yourself and lowering yourself by uh, being obedient and freeing yourself from shirk, associating partners with Allah. And the Sheikh says, Al-Islam, it is submission to Allah uh, lowering yourself, you know, and uh, cutting out uh, what Allah has commanded you to carry out. And the Muslim, he is the one who is humble, humbles himself, lowers himself, and he follows and carries out and uh, uh, the uh, the laws of Allah, and he lives by those laws and those rules. And uh, by by how by following the commands of Allah. That which is commanded, uh, being, uh, that you we been commanded with, and leaving off that which Allah has prohibited us from. Right, this is what that means. And the Sheikh goes on to say, "Qala ilm anna nawaqid al-Islam ashratu nawaqid wa qulu rahmallah ashratu nawaqid leis al-murad huna hasr al-nawaqid bihad al-adad, walakin al-murad bayan ahmi wa adam wa akhtar nawaqid al-Islam wa ashadiha zararan wa bayan nawaqid al-lati turjau ilayha bi." بقية نواقض الإسلام الأخرى ولهذا فإن هذه النواقض العشرة التي ذكرها رحمه الله تعالى هي أخطر النواقض وأشدها ضررا هذا من جهة ومن جهة ومن جهة ثانية بقية بقية نواقض الإسلام في الغالب ترجع إلى هذه العشرة فكان من نصه رحمه الله وحسن توجيه وبيانه أن 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 جمع هذه العشرة عشرة النواقض في هذه الرسالة المختصرة مختصرة النافعة المفيدة غاية الفائدة ويأتي مثل هذا الأسلوب ولا يراد به الحصر قوله عليه الصلاة والسلام اجتنبوا السبع الموبقات وذكرها عليه الصلاة والسلام هل الموبقات هي هذه السبع فقط؟ أو أن هناك أيضا موبقات أخرى غيرهن لكن جمعه لهذه السبع تأكيد على خطورتهن أيضا قوله في الحديث المتقدم ألا إنما هن أربع لا تشرك بالله شيئا ولا تقتلوا النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق ولا تزنوا ولا تسركوا هذا بيان لأخطر الموبقات وليس المراد so this is a very important paragraph here. So the Sheikh, he says that the Sheikh mentions, the original author says that the nullifiers of Islam are 10. So the Sheikh, he asks the question. He says, is the intention here that there, that, the, that there are only 10 nullifiers of Islam? Or are there more? And the answer is, there are more. But why are 10 mentioned here? The Sheikh says 10 are mentioned here because these 10 are the most severe of them all. They are at the top of the list. They are at the top of the list of things that nullify or actions or deeds or sins or whatever it is that nullify your religion and render it to zero, absolute nothing. And the Sheikh also mentions an important point as well. He says that these 10 that the Sheikh, may Allah have mercy upon him, has given us the benefit and uh, taught us, he will, inshallah we learn these, he's brought these 10 for 10 forth to us, why? He's brought forth these 10 nullifiers because the rest of the nullifiers of our deen, there are more than 10, the remaining others, many of them, they all come back to these 10. They all are related to these 10. So if we know these 10, then we'll easily be able to recognize as well others. Now from there, and obviously we learned others as well, but these are the 10 most important, most dangerous ones that can lead us out of the fold of Islam 
on the rest of the nullifiers that the Sheikh has mentioned in this particular book, but the rest of the nullifiers return to this. This is the starting point for those other nullifiers. So, and so the Sheikh makes the point, uh, for example, also where uh, we read the hadith of the Prophet earlier on in the lesson, uh, not that one, sorry. Uh, uh, and are they not for, like from earlier on what we read in the lesson, are they not for, i.e., you know, um, uh, uh, don't commit shirk. Uh, um, uh, don't uh, don't commit shirk with Allah. Don't steal. Uh, don't kill. Don't kill yourself. Don't commit suicide. Uh, don't uh, um, uh, fornicate and don't steal. The Sheikh says. Also, are there only four? Because the Prophet doesn't mention four. He says no. There are more than four, but these are at the top of the list. These are the most severe of them all. These are the worst ones. And so the Sheikh just mentions this point to pose as a benefit as well that and we know and we take away that we we know and have knowledge and are aware that these are the te- these 10 nullifiers in this book these are the top of the list these are the most severe and worst that 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 are there so we need to be aware of them and all the rest of the nullifiers they return to these 10 the link with these 10 right so then the shaykh continues he says to us ashahidu anna nawaqid al-islam تَزِيدُ عَلَى هَذَا الْأَدَدْ لَكِنَّ مَا ذَكْرَهُ رَحْمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى هُوَ أَخْتَرْ هَذِي النَّوَاقِدْ وَأَشَدِّهَا ذَرَرًا وَبَقِيَّةِ النَّوَاقِدْ تُرْجَعُ فِي الْجُمْلَةِ إِلَى هَذِي الْأَشَرَةِ الَّتِي ذَكْرَهَا رَحْمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى قال الأول من هذه النواقد الشرك في إبادة الله وذكر, وذكر الأدلة على تحريم الشرك وأنه أعظم الموبقات وأخطر الظنوب وأنه أعظم, أعظم ذنب أوصي الله عز وجل به قال الشرك بالله وبدا به قبل غيره لانه اخطر اخطر ذنب واكبر واكبر موبقه كما جاء النبي عليه الصلاه والسلام في ذكره للكبائر وعد وعده لها يبدا به وده لها يبدا به كما في حديث ابن مسعود المتقدم الا انبئكم باكبر الكبائر قلنا بلى يا رسول الله قال الإشراك بالله بدأ به وكما في قولي عليه الصلاة والسلام اجتنبوا السبع الموبقات قلنا وما هن يا رسول الله قال الشرك بالله والسحر ثم ذكر بقية الموبقات فبدأ بالشرك ولهذا بدأ المصنف هنا رحم الله تعالى به so we conclude inshallah here so what the sheikh is saying here we, we, we've already mentioned some of it already but the sheikh says finishing here that the first Nullify that the Sheikh mentions in his book is shirk. Why? Because it's the greatest of sins that you can commit. And it's associating partners in, uh, with Allah Jalla wa'ala. And it takes you out of the fold of Islam uh, immediately. Uh, whoever falls into this. Uh, and the Sheikh mentions why? Because this is the most dangerous and the biggest uh, crime that you can, you can commit against Allah Jalla wa'ala. And then the Shaykh mentions some examples from the hadith of Ibn Masood radiallahu anhu that we mentioned earlier. Uh, are they not, uh, uh, shall I not inform you of the greatest of the, of the greatest of the major sins? And then it was, you know, it goes back to the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ started off by saying, uh, associating partners with Allah. That's the first thing he mentioned because it's the greatest. And this is why the author begins with the most greatest, with the most severe first. Uh, and likewise in, in another hadith, uh, uh, stay away from or avoid stay far from and avoid seven destroyers or seven major sins or seven destroyers and we said as in the sahaba they said we said and what are they ya rasulullah sallam and uh, the prophet sallam said he started off with a shirku bil uh, shirku billah committing shirk with allah and then he said a sihr to the end of the hadith um, but the important point the shaykh is trying to make here for us is that uh, the prophet mentioned shirk first and that is the on top of the list. Yeah. And so the Sheikh concludes uh, there on that paragraph. And inshallah, we'll stop as well. And we'll continue from this point. Um, in, in a couple of weeks, there'll be a, a, a two-week break because I won't be able to deliver lessons for the next two weeks. But inshallah, we'll continue uh, on the f- uh, 15th, 16th, 17th, I believe. Uh, uh, so so two weeks from now, inshallah. And then we'll continue with the book as normal. Barakallahu feekum. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت واستغفرك وأتوب إليك وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اتبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين
السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ